Now let me show you some clips from my main watercolour Patreon video lesson on how to paint a very cunning looking fox. Let's get started. Okay, we'll start off by adding in the cadmium orange first of all. Using our double zero, and remember these paints are more of a um, milky consistency. It's this one here, lot. So cadmium orange, we've got the burnt sienna, and we've got the French ultramarine and lamp black, and we've got the indigo and cerulean blue in the bottom one there, just for now anyway. We'll probably add to that as we go along, kind of make up as we go along, to a certain degree. I do like to kind of plan a lot of the colours out first, if I can, before I make a start on the painting. Just test them out on some scrap watercolour paper. And then we can add more to it as we go along, or different colours as we go through the process. But at least that way you've got some basic idea, the kind of colours that you'll need before you make a start. Try and look at the shape as well, because where the highlight is at the top there, that goes quite high up, doesn't it? But not to the very top itself. Just like the tap, keep tapping all the time. And then down there, it's about that kind of depth. Yeah, something like that. And I'll wash the brush out, and then come back in again. Then very lightly tap around the outside edge of this again, as we did before. Just kind of break it down, soften it out. But no need to go right to the top, because the highlight will kind of pick out some very fine edges there. I can see on this side it's really bright, just kind of hooks around to there, and oh, it's really tiny, and then very lightly, barely touching the paper, two hours in air, that's all I'm doing, put a few little lines in there, more or less from like one o'clock down to, I don't know, actually 11 o'clock really, isn't it? 11 o'clock down to 5 o'clock sort of direction. I'm trying to see where that goes actually because that's more white around there. I want a little bit of this colour in there. Engine red cadmium orange. Just pop that one in. A little bit of that. A bit more. And then we'll go straight in. Give me brush a quick wash out. To the Scarlet Lake and Burnt Sienna. Now, if you the thing is as well, when you've got all these colours mixed up in your palette, is remembering what, what you've got in there. Just a tiny bit down this kind of crevice down there, just on the edge of that. Barely touching. And a little bit down there. And that might be about it, I think. It's not far off. So it's just looking at those lines and where they go. Using the same colours, so the Indian red, cadmium orange, and the burnt sienna to a milky consistency as per usual don't want to go creamy not just yet we don't want to make it too thick just yet and then these are also smaller lines so when you can see how tiny these lines are, are here look so i'm really keeping them very tight very tiny making use of the dry brush i'm going to get a little bit of this yellow, okay, which was that burnt sienna and lemon yellow. I'm gonna add it into this black, so that's a blacky blue. Makes it just a touch green, really, but I just wanna think about right underneath the chin here, underneath the mouth, just a touch of like a yellowy color in there. Not much, just a hint of it. You very often find that, it's like a little bit of a secondary light reflection that you find um, when you're painting wildlife, and underneath, especially underneath the chins and on the chest, places like that, you'll see that. As long as you've got some reference marks in place first, because when you turn it over, your perspective is completely thrown, which it, which it is, unless you turn your photograph over, which you can do on a tablet or iPad. Or if you printed one off, of course, you know, that's even easier. But turning the paper over can help you kind of pull some of the lines in the right direction. So for example, when we're pulling the odd hair into the background, we'll normally start from the inside and then pull out. So I'll just do a few there a lot. See what I mean? So that way you get a nice tapered edge. As your brush lifts off, 
it kind of gives you a tapered finish to that line because you're starting with a dot and you know from here because you always end up starting on like a little dot so when you do any of the um, the finer details coming off for example around here just do it from the inside out and lift off I mean by I'm just tapping this keeping it as minimal as possible and I'm going to put a little bit around this area here because you can't really see that on the photograph unless you've got a background on it obviously you can see when there's a background there but I'm going to put a little bit of detail in there so we can just see where that goes now okay carry on with this towards five o'clock and try and follow the direction that all this goes so more towards probably between 10 and 11 o'clock tiny tiny little marks so all I want to do you can barely see it as I say but we know it's there Oh, there you go. Then bring a few out, crossing over every now and then as well. So a few crossovers. And then bringing it back towards the ear. Tiny little curls, barely touching that paper. Don't press on too hard. All right, so I'm going to do the same now all the way around the other side. And as I say, when you're running out of paint, just do these little tiny ones in here because uh, they're quite pale in there. A little bit more over that same one, but just darken it down a little bit. And the same with this one, just trying to see which way it goes. The only thing watercolour white underneath is that will dilute the black or the dark colour, so it will lighten it. So just bear that in mind when you do this. Now we've got some fine ones underneath the chin as you can see here so add those in as well and I think other than that that's about it so remember you've got to put one two three four on there you can just about see them on the dark background can't you so so bear that in mind so that'll do for now and that's how I would paint a fox in watercolor now the full real-time video of this fox lesson is now available on my online school so if you feel this is something just for you, come and join my members on Patreon and gain access to lots of exclusive content and all of that catalogue of information and videos that you can have a go at painting straight away. Hopefully I'll see you there. Bye for now.